Yo, what's up? It's your boy Nick September. Uh, starting the recording episode 99. 99, one more, won't do, or something. 99 won't do. Is that how I go? <laughs> My great grandfather would be disappointed in that. I don't remember his favorite gospel song. 99 won't do. I think that's what it's saying. Anyway, we are at episode 99. I got my guest, DJ Body Slanger. He'll be here in the halfway mark. And, yeah, we're just going to do this thing, man. Uh, recording a little later than usual, so maybe a little bit more up to date. I got a lot, a lot, a lot to talk about. This week has been uh, crazy, to say the least. So, uh, yeah, while you're at it, Always remember, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Make sure you hit the bell button as well. So if any, you know, get any notifications, anything new pops up, any new uh, content, and hit that like button, hit that share button. Let people know. If you enjoy the content, you know, spread the word. It's appreciated. Uh, leave comments so I can know that you are available or here or listening or watching or whatever. Um, uh, it's appreciated, man. And what else? I think that's about it. Also, check out all my partners on YouTube. Um, shout out to Backpack Beats, Big Low, everybody else doing anything or whatever. So uh try to cover as much as possible. Um, may forget some things. If I do, I apologize. Blame it on my mind, not my heart. Um yeah. We got a lot to discuss, and we're going to get into it. So we're going to go ahead and start this recording. Uh-oh, my bad. I forgot that my GoPro was on. Um, unfortunately, I won't be able to do anything with it this week. But maybe next week. Um, give y'all these uh, B-roll vibes. Ooh. Nick was stepping it up. <laughs> anyway, man, let me let me get to it, man. We got a lot to talk about, and I don't have time to uh, talk about nonsense. So let's go. Boom, 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 and we are back. This is your boy Enigma September. You're now listening to the Enigma Self Hour, uh, the podcast. This is episode ninety nine. We are here. We are here now. Or almost. Got one more to go <laughs> before we get into the triple digits. Uh, what you just heard was my man Marcel P. Black with Black Fists and Gang Signs. Uh, he just dropped Angry Black Raps on his Bandcamp page uh, yesterday, I believe, which is July 3rd. So if you're interested, you should be go and check that out. Uh, it's not long. It's not long at all. It's only a um, like five songs, so it's, it's really just an EP. So we want to go ahead, download it, check it out. Um, figure it was relevant for today in today's um, climate, as you all know. But yeah, man, I got my man DJ Body Slanger uh, coming through. Slang girl, I said, yo, I said that mad Cali ish body slanger. It's, that's not even, it's body slanger with an A. You guys should be able to see the, uh, not body slanger. <laughs> say it with an A, not an ER. Say it with an ER. That's when you get racist. Body slanger. Really? Uh, speaking of racist, yeah, we're going to call somebody out. I'm, I'm trying to figure out why every time I have a guest that, screw it. Every time I have a white guest, why do I always got to call out some racist shit? <laughs> Man, it's, it's just, it's weird. It's just really weird. But I guess it plays out nicely. Because let you guys know that you can call out racism and not have to be racist. Or also, too, to call out racism because one is anti-racist 
or one is pro-black, but doesn't mean that one is anti-white. So yeah, there's your lesson, kids. <laughs> That's it. Roll credits. <laughs> it's the end of the episode. Anyway, man, we got a lot. To, we got a lot to talk about, man. Shout out to Marcel P. Black, man. Angry Black raps. All right, we want to get into. All right, first, I guess we get into the BS. Get into the BS quick. Um, yes, we are just now starting July. But apparently, all the talk is about August. August Alcina, to be, in particular. So, how does this start? I, I got to explain to you guys how this started. So, August Alcina, who is clearly on an album run, keep that in mind, was on some blog TV show uh, crap with uh, Shorty from The Breakfast Club, Angela Yee. And in that, inter- amongst that interview, and they, they put a clip out of Mr. Alcina stating his love for one Jada Pickett Smith. Of course, the dad Smith indicates that she's married to one Will Smith, AKA the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, AKA the Fresh Prince from West Philadelphia, born and raised. So, yeah, so he, he came out and was just like, yo, I have a deep love for her. I gave my all to her with his Khalees hair. His, his hair was like Khalees. Man, if I was on my, I was on point, y'all would have a picture right, well, right here, right here. I don't want to take out McKenzie. <laughs> but yeah, my graphic game, we'll put up a picture of, of August Elsina. Man, so yeah, you saying he gave all this love and, and that he mentioned that Will and Jada was transitioning from having a marriage to a life partnership. Didn't know there was a difference, but okay. And that he had Will's blessing in regard regarding the love that he gave to Jada. Granted, all of this was encoded language, but the internet ran with it like a mob. I ain't even getting that. But <laughs> I'm trying to set some myself just a little bit for you guys. But um, yeah, the internet ran with it, pretty much thinking that it meant that, you know, him and Jada Pickett Smith had an affair uh, in the household with Will Smith being totally cool with it. Now, it's also been rumored that Will and Jada has an open marriage, open, yeah, open marriage. Who knows? I, for one, have learned early on what happens in other people's marriages is not my business at all. Ain't my business, bro. If, it, if y'all cool with it, I am cool with it. But it is not my business to uh, try to dictate or indicate what one's had, what one's having going on with their marriage. So if they have an open marriage, all right, better. If that works, cool. It is what it is. Uh, but I do think that, um, oh, I must add that Jada Pinkett came out with a tweet saying that she had to bring herself to her own Red Table. Of course, the Red Table Talk, now podcast, apparently. Everyone wants to do podcasts. Yeah, okay. <laughs> But yeah, so yeah, so everyone's waiting for that. I don't know when it's gonna drop. I know Felicia is a big fan of the Red Table podcast, so I'm pretty sure she'll be on point and ready to let. Uh, I, I, I basically what I'm saying is I forgot to fee when the Red Table talk <laughs> pops off. But um, man, I just honestly, I just I don't know what to make of it. Um. Part of me doesn't care. Again, like I said, it's Jada and Will Smith. Whatever they got going on is cool. Clearly, they've raised their kids. And you guys can hear the birds. It's, that's wild. <laughs> I need to find a studio. <laughs> Speaking of, yeah, while I'm in the middle of this juicy, no, juicy news, yo, I got a cash out, bro. I got a cash out. Dollar sign, Enigma Self. 
hit me up, man. Hit me up so we can get the studio popping. <laughs> get the studio popping, man, and um, y'all won't be hearing birds chirping like it's six o'clock in the morning. That's wild. Anyway, so <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. It is what it is. If they raise their kids, all the kids seem pretty adjusted to life and doing things. Willow doing her thing. Jada doing his thing. Trey is doing his thing. Okay, so Jada got some got some side dick. Will probably got some side trim. But as long as they love each other and the family's intact and everyone has an understanding of what's going on, I, and me, that's where I that's that's where I, I fall in line. If they have an understanding, then who cares? Why, why does the world care? Other than, yeah, August being like mad. Uh, well, I will take this. Now, maybe the world should care about this, though, because August w did go through some things. I think a few years ago, he mentioned about going through having mental illness episodes. Nothing, nothing you know, for right. I don't want to say crazy. That's horrible to say. Uh, but he had dealt with some things. I think he lost a, a brother or something. Leave comments below. Let me know if I'm right, if I'm wrong. I think he lost a brother a couple of years ago. So I think when he went into the, the 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 Will Smith family's fold, he was going through some things. He also had like, since my mentioned he had an autoimmune disease, so he was going through some things. So I think that I think it may not be the infidelity, which I don't know if it's infidelity, if Jada and Will have an understanding. The infidelity is if you're lying about stuff, not necessarily if you're doing something, if your partner already knows what's good. But it may be a bad thing if August was going through some things and Jada, especially being as insightful as she comes off as being, someone took advantage of that. Now, granted, he's a grown man, but it doesn't make it okay that she took advantage of him being in a weak spot, a uh, weak moment, or uh, a vulnerable moment. So you do have that. I will say, okay, I give you guys a little leeway. But other than that, as far as Will and, will and Jada and what they do in their marriage, they kids straight, they straight, they living their life. Y'all go ahead and do what y'all do. I ain't finna do that. And I know Will, I, mean, will, I know, uh, yeah. I hope my cousin isn't concerned about what I do. Anyway, but I know uh, Felicia is not having that at all. So, yeah, ain't no open relationships over here. <laughs> Don't try it. Don't even try it. Yo, you think Fee may be? No. No. And I'm done. I've done enough in my lifetime. Uh, <laughs> yo, let's keep it moving, man. Get crazy times. Yo, what we got? Number two on the docket. This going to be real quick. Whack 100 is, of course, just whack. Man, he's a troll, bro. But he's not even, like, good at trolling. I mean, it's, it's obvious that's why he signed, you know, Blueface. And that's all Blueface is. Man had, what, that one song? The one joint? I can't even... Tatiana? Nothing since. Everything has just been a series of things, like him kicking his mama out of his house and I think his girlfriend spilling his face or something. I don't know. But, um, yeah, Wack 100, who I think is... The games, brother, who again game teeter tots on troll status as well. Uh, Wack 100 came out and said he he endorses Trump. Um, and basically went to this whole tirade of why he uh he'd rather vote for Trump than Biden. And the ideal is is that I guess the ideal is that he knows what Trump is about, and um, and I guess. Also, too, because there's been things that relates Biden to races uh, back in the day. That it's like, look, they both racist, so I might as well go with the one who I know. Um, bro, and he was like, well, the country hasn't fallen apart since Trump, so what's, what's four more years? Um, and, and I, had to, I, had to, I had to look and see who he made the statement, and it was this week. I'm like, bro, we are in a recession. <laughs> Arizona and Florida is being ravaged by COVID-19 outbreak. 
it's partially because the government hasn't been doing his job, in particular, the president. Are you sure <laughs> that uh, you really don't want Joe Biden, who was at least vice president at some point, and I remember things being pretty okay before then. I mean, him and Obama got us out of a recession. You got to put us where all the things we enjoy now was essentially that administration's work. And they killed Bin Laden. So is Trump really the lesser of two evils? If you're going to play that role, you're going to try to take the whole Malcolm X approach of I'd rather deal with the foot, the fox, I mean, rather deal with the wolf than the fox. Bro, that was, that may have been cool in 1964, but in 2020, yeah, Michael X have to contend with uh, COVID-19. No disrespect. I, I, I love Malcolm X, or at least I love his teachings and what he said, so don't get it twisted. I'm not disrespecting Malcolm X. However, that was 1964. You may have to apply different philosophy in 2020. So, and yeah, honestly, I don't know if WAC 100 is that versed in Michael Max theology to really, you know, maybe somebody told him and then he kind of like played in his head and thinking he's saying it. Maybe just coincidence. But, uh, yeah, man, nah. No, I'm sorry. Like, again, I don't think that the issue, I, I don't know. I just, I don't see why people are really, like, really hate Biden. I get you don't like him. I get you don't like the politics. But honestly, if you don't like the system, that's one thing. I get that. I'm with you with that. But this idea of either, A, I'm going to vote for Trump, or I'm not going to vote at all uh, because Biden is this and Biden is that, the cards have been set. I think I, I think I said this before. The cards have been set. I hope you guys know. It's either Biden or Trump. You can go for third party. I'm all for voting third party. Anybody knows me. I hate the two party system. I think that's the corporate. I think a lot of times we look at either, you know, the fact we look at Trump or we look at Biden and say, oh, see, that's the problem. No, the problem really is the two party system. And the way it pits, you know, pits us against each other, you know. But regardless, um, yeah. In this sense, I mean, just common sense. Just everything. Okay, let's say you look at Trump, you look at Biden. Things are they both corrupt. They both racist. They both old white men. So that all that equals cancels each other. Cancel each other's out. At the end of the day, Biden, under the Obama's administration, like, this country went from the ashes of hell <laughs> and became a little something. And Trump took over and really tried to take, uh, that what's the word, tried to take credit. And again, I think that's what WAC 100 went to. Oh, look at unemployment. That's because of what Biden and Obama did from 2009 to 2017, bro. Not Trump. <laughs> so, again, I guess I'm not telling, I'm not telling anybody who to vote for. You have your own consensus. That's cool. As long as you vote your conscience, that's straight. But all this, I don't want to vote for Biden uh, crap because of whatever. Hey, like, bro, man. Like, honestly, my, my take is this. When you talk, I'm going to say this and I'm going to keep it moving. I think it is between Biden and Trump. You need to be thinking about 2024 and 2028. Because I don't think if Trump win, he's out of here by 2024. Unless he really do some Hitler shit. Or FDR. Mm, spice. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I think if Biden run, he only going to do one turn. Because yeah, he is up in age. And I think he gonna he gonna pull a, a a Johnson, Lyndon Johnson. Like, all right, I'm straight, I'm tired. So, regardless, focus on 2024. You know what I mean? Just go. By this time, even I know it's what July. 
Yo, you, you should know who you vote for. Ain't you no, know, you start arguing or whatever, whatever. What are you going to vote for? All this, I don't know if this person, this, I don't. But I'll say this. When Biden was in office, this country was doing pretty good. So I don't see why in the world y'all look at Trump, honestly. Especially with all the bullshit. Especially with all the bullshit that he represents. No. Nah, I'm straight. I, I'd rather, even if Biden is secretly racist, I'd rather him put up a front. I'm good. Put up your front for the next four years. We're going to figure out who we're going to put in, put in that 2024. And I'm going to focus on my local and state governments as well. So there we go with that. Anyway, keep it moving. This is a political show. That's for Pat and Joe. They can do all that. Or even Shelby and uh, Princess Candace. I'm sorry. Lord, she goes, what my queen? Queen Candace. Let me rephrase that. She is a queen. Shout out. They got a new uh, what is it, avatar. Or, man, that thing pretty, too. I mean, they already pretty. Shout out to my black women. But that thing look fresh, man. Shout out, man. All right, Shelby, kid. I'll see y'all, man. Shoot. <laughs> but yeah, let me forget, man. That, that lady is not a princess. She's a whole queen doing her whole thing, own businesses and everything. Well, what, what? I'm slipping. I'm slipping. I ain't doing shit over here. What I'm talking about. Uh, anyway, I need to catch up. Um, who we got? Oh, yeah. Speaking of Trump supporters, <laughs> we got. I told y'all we got a lot to talk about. Kind of running through them. Uh, Kanye. Kanye is in the news. He dropped a new video. Um, I think it was Washed in the Blood. Uh, e, you didn't research and find out what uh, what Kanye's uh, new song is? No, I didn't. Because I don't care. But E, I thought you was a Kanye fan. I was, but the <laughs> man's been slacking. Granted, he's a new billionaire. I'm big up for that, but other than that, man, musically, nah, I'm straight. I ain't really, <laughs> ain't really looking for Kanye. But no, um, you got a new album called God's Country. So that again is like, I don't know. Like, granted, I will say this: I was some people, one of the people, one of the few people that was like, uh, what was the last? Jesus is King wasn't a bad album. Wasn't, wasn't a bad album. I think one of his better albums um, in a while, sonically, and but I just I don't know, I just all right with Kanye and other stuff. Uh, and I called you, I've called you guys out on Twitter. I see y'all all of a sudden cool with Kanye now. Speaking of, he's now working with Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg apparently, on, I guess on this new album. Uh, y'all a video called "Watch Us in the Blood" with uh, Travis Scott his brother-in-law, somewhat. I'm not being technical. Um, and then also, too, like you said, you got a, a new album apparently called God's Country, and like I said, you're going to have Dr. Dre, which, again, sonically, I'm pretty sure going to be a beast, and that's going to be, like, dumb crazy. But on the flip, I just, I'm sorry. It gets down to him and Candace Owens, like, they may have a change of heart about some things, but until I see like a reversal and or an apology, apology, remember that, <laughs> an apology from them and say, hey, look, we was tripping back then. We understand where we at now. This is how we feel. We still stand on this, but we on this. Then I'd be like, all right, cool. Because I love them. They're still black people. And I love my black folks. So I don't hate them. I ain't mad at them. I think they're confused. But I ain't mad at him, you know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, man. So I, ain't, I, I can rock Kanye. I'm, I'm cool. I'm gonna listen because I got a podcast, a hip hop podcast. But uh, other than that, I really ain't. Not making me a little hot under the collar. Not at all. <laughs> you can keep it. But uh, again, I'm gonna listen, especially with the Dr. Dre joint. I'm I'm sorry. Um, Matter of fact, did I mention Dr. Dre? What? I'm trying to tell y'all, man. It's so much stuff. I don't know if I told y'all last week. I'm telling tell you this week, Dr. Dre getting a divorce from his wife. And I don't think there's a prenup after 24 years. So I guess uh, it's going to kind of suck because I think, what, Dre was supposed to be the first hip-hop billionaire? 
It didn't pop off. Now Jigga and and Yeezy then jumped over. Now you about to lose half because he didn't sign a prenup in California. In California, <laughs> California knows how to party. Yeah, they know how to get a divorce too. They they give it up automatically. It's not even an argument. Ain't no settlement. No, she get half, bro. We don't even care. She get half off top. <laughs> Yo. So I just said, we in here. Man, I ain't gonna front. I'm gonna be a whole hypocrite. I'm gonna be a whole hypocrite. I want to know why they get in the divorce. I know I, know I just sat here and spent five minutes telling y'all not to mind people's uh, marriage business. But uh, uh, 24 years, like I'm pretty sure like Drake crept around like for years. I mean, he got a new baby on the way. She is tired. Uh, is it because he's working with Kanye? Is he working on a new album? <laughs> Maybe he told her, like, look, baby, put this Compton album out and I'm done. I mean, she saw him working again. She was like, nope, you said you was done. Fuck you, man. But baby, I, I slept with 200 women while you while I was with you. You gonna leave me for this? A lady has to have standards. So, man, let me stop. I should be, I should be nervous. <laughs> I'm about to get married. I look, get married 24 years. 24 years, man. If he leave me after 24 years, I'm gonna be, I'll probably be out of here first. <laughs> but I hope I live 24 years, first of all. But second, man, that'd be crazy. I'm gonna be old. I ain't gonna be able to do nothing. There's nothing to be done for me or about me because, yeah, 24 years from now, I'm great already. Y'all can imagine. <laughs> anyway, speaking of old niggas, oh, uh, yeah, Jada versus Fabulous. Yeah, another versus. Um, I did not see this versus at all, bro. Maybe I just haven't been on my game this week, but I did not know this versus was popping. Me and Fee happened to just come in and I went to my old trusty YouTube and someone was like showing the YouTube live. Uh showing the, the Instagram, you know, because versus on Instagram, but they were showing the live Instagram feed on YouTube. I was like, oh, this is happening? All right, Maul and Rory, <laughs> guys win. Uh, but yeah, man, um, everybody said Jada, Jada killed it. Um, I wasn't sure. I guess I came in like halfway. Uh, I just knew Jada was like drunk as hell. Fabulous may have been drunk. People say Fabulous was drunk. Um, I'm not sure. Fabulous seemed to be holding his own, but Jada was clearly out of here. Uh, speaking of Jada, <laughs> yeah, Jada and Jada, Jada kiss. I miss August Al Alcina had Jada's kiss. I miss he appreciated that, huh? Yeah, I made that joke. Give me, give me, my, give me my flowers. <laughs> give me my flowers. I made that joke off top. I'm David Chappelle. I'm rich, nigga. Anyway, but uh, yeah, man, Jada was drunk, looking like goddamn. Uh, the son from Teletubbies and shit. Uh, <laughs> yo, you know who looked like Jada? Goddamn, Rothoro. Rothoro looked like Jada. Rothoro kicked my ass. That birthday to Rothoro. I think his birthday was this week. Matter of fact, I'm pretty sure it was. That birthday to Rothoro. Uh, yeah, that's a <laughs> Rothoro be fresh too. Man, Rothoro, man, that's my man's. But, uh, I gotta get, I gotta get, have a thorough building party? Yeah, he has. I gotta get him back on here. Well, Thorough, you watching, bro. You probably not. I'll let you, boy. That's disrespectful. What we got? Um, One more thing before we get into the shenanigans, bro. Yeah, I told y'all, we, we going, it's gonna be it. It's gonna be it. <laughs> Ow! And nick myself hour. Nick myself power. How about that? And I gotta let y'all know, man. I am, I'm, I've been contemplating, you know, uh, podcast name change. 
like I said, the the hour thing is kind of kind of not it. It's it's more than an hour most times. So uh, shoot, man, if y'all got any suggestions, get at your boy. Let me know. I don't know. It's gonna suck because I got all that stats again. <laughs> the stats, bro. I, just, I gave you. I mean, I made you a a, a logo. Like two years ago, now you want to change your name? The hell? Anyway, speaking of Stess, happy birthday to my man Stess. Also to to my uh, my cousin, my big sis, uh, Kianda. Uh, their birthday was both on June 29th. Key reached a big 4-0, which means I'm only three months behind because she was born three months before me. So I'm seeing the future right now, but uh, happy birthday to those two. It is cancer season. Lord, be with us all. So before I get into the shenanigans, man, uh, nothing that popped up on me that I was not prepared for at all was the BET Awards. Uh, and I wasn't uh, aware the BET Awards was going to be on CBS. That was wild. It was like super, super wild. Because BT decided to go like super super black, um, uh, pro black, and they they killed that front except for one end. I'm gonna highlight that real quick. But um, the one thing they didn't kill for me is having Amanda Seals as a host. Now Amanda Seals is cool. I don't really hate on Amanda Seals like that. I find it kind of weird that she gets the hate that she gets. I don't know why. Yes, I just picked my eyelash. I don't know why she gets the hate that she get. Sometimes when a lot of people come at you like that, either you just got the worst of luck or you really are an asshole and you just getting what you deserve. I don't know what it is about Amanda Sales, but it always seems to be some shit that gets in her way. But people seem to like her, still fuck with her for whatever reason. She cool with me. I ain't really got a problem with her. But my problem wasn't necessarily with Amanda Sales or Amanda Diva, if you remember her from back then. My problem was the background that they decided to use that made her look like it was Cedar's world. Now, I know that they were, it had her transitioning through different scenes to look like past BET shows. And Cedar, Cedar's world is the past BET show. But I'm not saying that there was a clip in which she looked like she was in Cedar's world. No, all of the clips looked like it was pre-2000 technology, which is horrible in 2020. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, man. But other than that, the performances were pretty dope. Um, no one cares about the awards because BET Awards hold no weight in regards to awards. I mean, it was all you saw with Lizzo and Rody Rich because they were the most popular artists in 2019. A new artist, rather. So we get it, BET, Viacom. But it was good to see, um, even though I did read Run Report, shouts out uh, to the homie Royce Hall. Uh, he posted an article about um, apparently BET uh, proved to be a bit transphobic in that there was supposed to be an ad rant by um, a trans woman, if I'm correct. And they didn't run it for whatever reason. And it appeared that it was supposed to be like a McDonald's commercial. And McDonald's was like, yo, like, we, we was with it. But BET, for whatever reason, didn't run it. Even though BET came out and put out a statement stating that, uh, you know, they stand with the uh, trans community, black trans community. But it just it did make them look uh, sour, at least in, in, that, in that community. So uh, hopefully BET gets that right. Um, because shoot, they got rights too, man. And you can't go, you can't say, like, I, and that's been the saying, you can't say you all, you, you Black Lives Matter if it's not all Black Lives Matter. Um, and that's true. That's true. That's how I feel. I love all Black people. Um, and if I don't say your lifestyle or your identity is that of, you know, trans, then Hey man, you suffering through the same thing I'm suffering, even more so. So, you know, 
And as me as a uh, yeah, black straight man, I'm not, and I'm definitely, I'm definitely not lost on that. I'm definitely not lost on the privilege I have, even in my oppression. I know that I have um, an advantage, even if you know I don't take uh, what's the word, take advantage of that advantage. You know, so I don't stand around and say, "Oh, well." Black women making more than me, or you know, or, or the or immigrants, black immigrants making more than me, or black gay people making more than me. So how how does that affect me? No, you end up sounding like some racist white person that says, "Oh, there's an Oprah and Obama, so racism can't exist." Nah, bro, that's not how that works. Like Obama and Oprah exist because in despite the oppression, but that doesn't clear the oppression. So even if uh, black women may be doing better in any category, if that's even a thing, uh, I think black women are the most educated. Even that's most agreed. Let's say black women are the most agreed amongst black people. That does not negate the fact that they deal with more stuff in the workplace and just in society, period. So me as a black man, I'm not going to sit here and bitch and moan about what people say about black men and then compare it to black women and say, well, black women ain't got it as hard. No, shut the fuck up, you punk, bitch-ass motherfucker. <laughs> I mean, what's wrong with you? You know, because you you individually may have it harder. It don't mean as a whole that black men have it harder or that black men, you know, need to, need to be our hand held. Because, oh, we under the pressure. No, all black people are under pressure, first of all. That's point blank, period. So, but knowing that me being a man, knowing because I, I was born with a dick, that just for that simple fact instance that my life is better, I'm not going to shit on somebody else and be like, oh, man, fuck y'all, because I'm struggling. No, we all need to get pulled up at the same time. If I realize that I have an advantage because of that, I'm gonna use that for our advantage, not my advantage. So y'all need to get off your own nuts, dumb motherfuckers. Anyway, man, I, I told y'all I was trying to clean up my language. And I'm about to get into the meat and potatoes <laughs> of all of this, man. Um, I'm just gonna go out and say it. Chris Clark Godwin. Christopher, sir, just like to announce that you, sir, are a racist. It is what it is. And I will hope that you would accept it because that's the only way you're going to change. It's the only way you're going to change. Now, most of you guys listening probably like, E, who in the hell? What in the hell are you talking about? So let me get into it, man. All right. So, Guy named Chris Clark Godwin. <laughs> um, he runs the uh, the Warrior on the riverfront here in Tallahassee, right on the edge of Leon County, uh, going into Gaston County. Um, and been following this fool for a minute, mainly because we're in the same musical circles. Uh, a lot of people uh, that I admire and respect still. Uh, use his venue, you know, to do certain things uh, within the hip-hop community. And so because of that, we had that connection. But uh, for a minute, I've been peeping a lot of things that he would uh, say or post that were really suspect, you know. And my man's, despite his uh, apparent uh, Native American heritage, he comes off and look like a white boy. So... If you didn't ask, you wouldn't know the difference. But in particular, um, his seemingly endorsement of Donald Trump was definitely a red flag. But even before then, man, he would post different things or whatever. So a lot of this shit popped off between me and him. A lot of this, uh, all this came to a head on uh, June 27th. So my man posted a comment and... I'm gonna put this up for my uh, my YouTube 
my YouTube viewers, since I have the ability to share a screen, what? So I'm going to read it off to, you know what I'm saying, my people, a podcast land, but for my YouTube, y'all be able to see it. So he posted this, uh, this bullshit. He posted this uh, statement or uh, status on Facebook, which he said, Epstein killed himself. Jet fuel melts steel beams. We walked on the moon. Prote- protesters didn't cause the spike in COVID numbers, but bars did. Golf of token was real. Now, I know a lot of people may be like, uh, the hell I got to do with anything? Well, first, let me indicate that he, of course, the warrior on the roof front is a bar. And so he had been complaining for like weeks now about how bars have been shut down, but stores like Walmart in particular hasn't been able to stay open. And his whole ideal is, is like, yo, if Walmart can stay open with thousands of people going in there a week, why can't my little bar stay open when I only got like a few people coming in? You know, I'm not going to affect the numbers that bad. Why I can't stay open and oh, this tyrant government, state government, whatever, whatever. So this was part of his like rant about uh, not being able to stay open and how COVID-19 is destroying his business, which I hope it does. So I saw this and what got me was the idea of protesters didn't cause spike in COVID numbers, but bars did. Now, of course, what we know about the protests, the protests have been about uh, the deaths of Breonna Taylor, and uh, George, Luke, uh, George, Lord have mercy, uh, George Floyd, and uh, Amar uh, Armory, Amar Armory. Now, of course, this is all about black people dying at the hands of white people, either being cops or trying to be cops. So, I was like, "Hold up, bro!" You know, and this is really evidence of the type of of like somewhat like racist stuff that he would post, but it was like hard to pinpoint because you like, yo, if you look at it, you know, for what it is, you like, all right, that's not racist, racist. Cause you know, the protesters are black, protesters are black and white or whatever, whatever. So he said protesters, he didn't say black protesters. He didn't say black lives matter or whatever. He just said protesters, right? But I was still like, nah, bro, bro. Nah, that just that don't, that don't sound right at all to me. So I decided to call him out. Let me see if I can find it. Hey, if y'all hear the dog on, <laughs> it is the 4th of July, and they've been popping these firecrackers for like two months now. All right, so... Mans came back. <laughs> I just realized what the uh, the, t- the status of the <laughs> Chris Godwin is racist. It is what it is, bro. What you gonna do? <laughs> so anyway, so I came back. You know, so I come in underneath. I was like, numbers were going up before the protests, but maybe if America wasn't racist, we'd be better off. But go off. And laughing emojis, because clearly y'all know I like to laugh at a lot of silly shit. Um, and it's true. The COVID numbers start going up prior to the protest. George Floyd died on Memorial Day weekend. That's when everything start opening up. And of course, if you take into account that the numbers wouldn't start calculating until a week or so later, the numbers start going up once those Memorial Day openings start taking an effect. The protest clearly didn't start until after George Floyd uh, was killed mercilessly, mercilessly by the uh, uh, Minneapolis police. So those were when the numbers, so the numbers are already going up. Did the protest have an effect? Maybe, but the, the numbers are already going up prior to that. So why would you pinpoint the protest, if anything? And again, like I mentioned, we wouldn't have a need of protest if America wasn't being racist. All right, if America was on its best behavior, 
everyone will stay in the house and sit still and say, hey, let's make sure this get over. But when you have injustice, sometimes you will risk life and limb because it's literally worth your life to make sure that your livelihood is that is, is safe amongst those that's supposed to be protecting you, right? So man's followed back with a note that when I, when I, uh, I copied this, it was just now. So it was right, not two minutes after I posted it, right? And I, meant, I say it, you have to look at this because he went back and tried to change it later to add on to it. But he still kept the same bullshit. So he responded back and said, try moving to Africa. Dramatic effect. <laughs> no, I'm going to read straight out. Man said, try moving to Africa and see how well that works out. LOL. Those fucks still have slaves. Um, sir, what the hell does, does Africa have to do with America being racist? I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure, what? Then, Try moving to Africa. Why would you say that to anybody, <laughs> in particular any black man? Really? <laughs> okay. So yeah, things got wild after that, man. Oh, uh, so at some point, his girlfriend, Miss Alicia Kilman, decided to come through, and before he even put out an apology. She decided to say, first, we would like to apologize for my very inflammatory, y'all know I can't read, PIC and production director. Okay, now, Grant, she said, my, oh, uh, this is a PIC, a person in charge, pussy in charge, punk ass motherfucker in charge. What's PIC? <laughs> picnic, lacking ass motherfucker in charge. What's picnic? What's PIC? and production director, Chris Godwin. First, she on bullshit. Let me let y'all know how much bullshit they own. Now, what she mentioning is that they own the Warrior. I can't even say own. They lease that motherfucker. Let me, let me correct. They lease the Warrior on the riverfront, like I told y'all before. And I was reading an article on it. I do my research because I'm a journalist. And it turns out that uh, the warrior, which is supposed to be again in in supposed to be about his uh, supposed uh, Native American heritage, but really want to know how much of that is true. Could be true. I'm not going to deny it, but who knows? But uh, apparently, according to this. Chris Godwin, 35, and his partner, Lisa Kilman, 32, which is this was a couple of years ago. So they, you can add two more years to that. Are an attractive couple. Why in the hell? What kind of freaky shit this, this report on? Tell us, Democrat, what y'all got going on? <laughs> Articulate, passionate, and probably very, very tired. I don't give a fuck. Oh, um, you got a picture of her, but I ain't finna give her no props. Apparently, she's, she's, uh, she's mixed. She's put that. But I also want to say, let it be known that the building which they leased uh, was apparently, back in 1961, first called the Confederate Inn, and later changed to the Confederate Super Club. Uh, it's the Arkansas College the Day. It was strictly segregated. 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 And so, but so yeah, this, this is a good one. Right? Yeah, I told you. He may be Native American, I'm not going to deny that. But, uh, but uh, yeah, that man got it. Here, now the warrior on the riverfront is really just a front for the actual company, which is the Tallahassee Live Music Community Charity Group, right? If you try to look up the riverfront, you won't find it. You won't find it on sunbiz.org. You won't find it on... Uh, the business better bureau or any of that sort because the riverfront is not really the business. The business is the Tallahassee Live Community Charity Group in which Godwin, Chris Godwin, is recognized as the trustee. Not She tried to make it seem as if he's some kind of uh, 
employee, but it says here, Child's Alive Music Community Charity Group was founded in January 2018 by Christopher Godwin, current trustee. So, just to let y'all know that she is on that bullshit in this whole thing. But she was saying he's only parroting a conversation we had previous today. I'm an African-American woman. I'm an African-American, yeah, African-American and currently operate the warrior on the river. I can assure you that Chris is not racist. He helps support me and my children, loves me dearly, grew up in Quincy. <laughs> what the fuck? Living in Quincy got to do. <laughs> Are you indicating that Quincy is like overrun by black people or something? And that makes it okay for what he said? All right. I am sharing some research about my ethnicity, ancestors, and slavery in current day Africa. When Chris says those fucks, he's referring to slave owners in Africa and across the globe presently. He didn't say shit about anything across the globe, but okay. And if you look on my page, I share those sources. Clearly, this was taken out of context. No, it wasn't. I'm not an idiot. <laughs> when we are passionate about something, we tend to react strongly and come across as crass. We are about to release Tallahassee Night's Live feature, an special BLM, Black Lives Matter, debut, support the performing arts, blah, 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 blah. Then went on, after that, to share a picture of, uh, that's not Felicia, Felicia's like, <laughs> I'm afraid of his ass. Um, share a picture, I don't know if you guys can see, um, of, I got you, Wes, if you watching, bro, hold tight. Um, a picture of uh, people, people that I know, actually, uh, shots out of Detroit, of Tallahassee Nights Live as to indicate that, yo, we can't be racist because we work with these black people. Look, we took a black and white picture with them. So now you're trying to cover up your tracks by using the image of black people as a weapon to try to shut me down and calling your man out for being racist. And let it be known, if you go through the thread, it's like 300 comments that was in the thread. It was other people that was contending that they knew that he was racist, that he knew that he knew that he was racist, and they don't fuck with him. Who my man on Bravo, DJ A to the L, and others had called him out or whatever. So, and not only that, when shit first popped off, and this is where Felicia was like, essentially was like, fuck him. Uh, <laughs> He came back. Did he come back and apologize after I posted it? No, he was like, yeah, because comparing America to a place that actually still has slaves in present, present day is racist. Uh, bro, it is. You know why? Because that wasn't the whole cause of it in the first place. First, we were talking about COVID-19. You were trying to put it on the protesters who was protesting against racism in America. I call that out. And, and then you put, if you go back, if you guys go back to the original uh, comment or the original statement all of the things that he listed were things that were uh, like conspiracy theories right as if they were fake they're not real so it's the idea that the protesters are part of this kind of imagined fake theory crap even in itself again comes off as racist I mean you gonna compare the protesters to Epstein bro in 9-11 and I don't know why you don't believe we ain't walking on the moon, but okay, go off again. <laughs> but again, go back to like even though there was an apology, there was no real, there's no real understanding. Go back to what I was saying about Kanye and Candace Owens. Like, look, you can apologize all you want, but I need a reversal of your whole thinking before I can accept whatever. And with this, like, hold up. And with this, like, I just, nah, I can't. You, I actually, we've let you slide, dang. Hold up, bro. Hey, what's up? Hold up real quick, I'll put you on mute, okay? Okay. Let me see. Oh, yeah, there we go. Cool. All right. Um, <laughs> I told y'all it was weird. But anyway, let me wrap this up. At the end of the day, bro, like, first of all, I ain't going to tell y'all who to fuck with. 
You know what I mean? If y'all want to continue to fuck with old boy, you feel like it was blown out of proportion, that's on you. You know what I mean? But I will say this. You will be judged by me. Point blank, period. Man's unproven, have proven that not only he's racist, but his girlfriend co-signed the shit despite her heritage and that he's unapologetic about it. You know what I mean? And granted, they go back to episode about Trump land and I really think a lot of it is he's so caught up in trying to be this libertarian fuck the government, fuck Democrats for screwing everything up that in that fight, there's racism that's mixed in that fight and you kind of take that somewhere with you. But, hey, you're not smart enough to discern between your beef with Democrats and the racist rhetoric that sometimes go along with that, then that's on you. It ain't for me to, to, to hold your hand and say, hey, no, you shouldn't say that. No, you should know better. You 30, 34, 35 years old, nigga. Motherfucker, should nobody tell you that telling a black man to do anything about going back to Africa is racist? Should nobody have to tell you that? Clear as day. Anybody know that? That's like textbook racism, just off top. You do not tell black people to go back to Africa or even reference the Africa. Now, also, too, it has nothing to do with Africa. What My statement had nothing to do with Africa. Except for I'm black. And clearly that's what you saw. You saw that I'm black. Or you saw racism, which again goes back to me being black. Thinking, hey, you should check out Africa. You know what? No, I don't have to check out Africa. I don't have to check out Africa. I don't have to check out Asia. I don't have to check out Europe or Australia or South America. Or even Mexico or Canada for that reason. Well, for that matter. You know why? Because on this day, 200 and something odd years ago, July 4th, these supposed founding fathers made a statement, wrote a whole out, a whole statement out stating that all men are created equal. All men, not just white, said all. And so because they wrote that check, we come in the cash. It. And that's why you have these protests. That's why you have people complaining. That's why you have people even rioting if, if, if that's the case. But that's why, because back then, some two or some years ago, they said all men are created equal. And we said, you know what? We're going to hold you to task for that. But this is about America, not anywhere else. So don't you telling me to go somewhere else. And that's what Alicia, if you listening or watching or whatever, that's why you sound like a dumb fuck. Why would you even continue? Well, he was talking about, it don't matter. That's not the point. We're talking about America. Not Africa as a whole continent. And honestly, you sound stupid because you couldn't even call out the, 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 country, the country itself. Was it Libya? I think that's where actually where they, yeah there is modern day slavery there. Uh, Morocco, one of them North, Northern African countries. But you see the African period, period, like his whole continent. Like if you go to Nigeria, it's popping off like that. If you go to South South Africa, it's popping off. If you go to Kenya, it's popping. Or you go to Egypt, it's popping. What part? What? Like you just you not only you sound racist, but you sound just dumb as hell. Even if I wasn't black, you would just still sound dumb as shit. But the fact of the matter is, bro, like, you, you racist. You said what you said because at your core, you are racist. And then you try to go back and try to double down on it. And mainly because of that, that's why it's fuck you. You could easily just be like, oh, my bad. I didn't mean to say it. I would have been like, hmm, that's kind of crazy. But all right. I, people know me. I give people a thousand passes. Thousands, like all right, man. Maybe, maybe it was just benefit of the doubt. But no, you double down on it. Blew my whole Facebook up. I was trying to enjoy my cousin's birthday. Blew my whole Facebook because you want to defend yourself on some bullshit that's really at your core, dog. It is what it is. Accept it and then change it. But until then, yeah, 
I ain't fucking with you. And I behoove anybody else who claims to care about the hip hop community in Tallahassee, in this region, and worldwide, not to fuck with you either. So rather if it's the riverfront or uh, the warrior on the riverfront or Tallahassee Live charity music group, y'all do y'all research. And if y'all see Chris Clark Godwin or Alicia Kilman on anything dealing with it, don't fuck with it. Now, if you do, that's on you. But I call your ass out too. Straight up. Because we, if you say you claim you love the culture, no. No, because it's fucks like that. Those are the those are the culture vultures that we talk about. Those are the culture vultures that come in here and claim like they love us, claim like they love our music, claim like they love our culture. But at the end of the day, secretly, they don't. And every now and then, they slip up, and that's what happened. He slipped up, and I got his ass. So, balls in y'all court now. What y'all gonna do? Y'all gonna let this culture vulture still come in here and make money off you like some fucking sharecroppers? Oh, we love y'all. No, you love the money you get, even if a little bit. But I'm done, because my guest is here, and two, COVID-19 finna fuck they shit up anyway. So fuck y'all. <laughs> Yo, I'm gonna take a pause for the calls, man. I'm gonna keep that thing getting up with uh my man West coming through. <laughs> that was kind of wild. Uh, what next? What's the next song we got? Yo, oh we got yeah yeah most fitting of course. Uh, you got your boy myself. Uh, I forgot to mention just crossed the five year anniversary of uh t- Tales of a College Grad. Not nothing dropped June 30th, 2015. So we're gonna drop this Nick myself. And Dermo and Venice Touch with Soul March. This is the Enigma Self Hour. You got time, baby. Boom, 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 and we back. It's your boy Enigma September. You are listening to episode 99 of Enigma Self Hour podcast. What you just heard was myself featuring my man's Dermo. And uh, Venice Tux with Soul March, like I said, the fifth year anniversary of that EP uh, just came about. Um, but without further ado, I got one of my homies representing the 850. You know what I'm saying? Man's been DJing since the age of 15, you know what I'm saying? Working with people such as Tribe Zion, Twisted Minds, uh, big friend of the show, Big Low. Uh, Saga, Elevated, Fear, and many others coming out of the Pensacola area. So without without further ado, got my man DJ Body Slinger in the building. What's up, bro? What's going on, man? <laughs> did you just read my Reverb Nation bio? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yep, that's what I did. I did that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm about to say, you probably got the most, the, the, the most uh, thought out uh, intro. <laughs> 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 I mean, it was a time, man. I was busy, man. Like, I was DJing for everybody in Pensacola. So, it was, sometimes it was four or five nights a week. So, but I mean, I was like younger, Wes, you know. I can't do that shit no more. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, we had we had those moments, you know what I mean? And that's what's, that's what's dope, you know what I'm saying? The fact that you even did that, it's still respectable, you know what I mean? You yeah, man. Those- it was it's uh it's a, it's an honor to have the DJ for all those guys, you know. So and then, and I got I got exposed to opportunities, you know. So always something I'll, I'll keep at heart. No doubt. So I feel kind of bad. I shouldn't. I, I trimmed my my beard down. I'm, I'm looking. <laughs> I'm looking kind of high schoolish in here. You know what I'm saying? Like you got a beast of a beard back over there. I just <laughs> The quarantine beard. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> she got the same amount of gray strands. It just, I was trying to, y'all, yeah, I was trying to trim mine down. I'm like, hold up. <laughs> we could have been that's, twins that's, over here. That's called a seven year old little girl. <laughs> hey, yo, trust me. Like, well, I, I can't even, I'm, Lord, Lord willing, I'm gonna be there. 
I, I got a three year old. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just, matter of fact, I was just talking to uh, our man's uh, Stess. Yeah, Stess, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to tell you business, bro. But uh, <laughs> so I, was, I was asking for pointers. I was like, bro, like, because his daughter is like, almost like literally a year older than my daughter Mackenzie. Um, yeah. Born in November. So I was just like, bro, like, I we're Brooklyn. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so that's all that Amaya. Amaya. Um, Amara, I said her name wrong. I know I said her name wrong. It's not Amara. Amira. So that's gonna kick my ass. Like, first of yeah, all, you fuck, second of all, you fuck up my daughter's name. <laughs> Your man Tar gonna come up here and kick my ass. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> but um, yeah, I was asking, I was just like, yo, what should I expect? You know what I'm saying? Being that Mackenzie would be she you know, she have a there, she's three and a half. I'm like, what should I expect? He gave me some pointers or whatever. Um, so shoot, I asked you the same thing, bro. Like, granted, I got three and a half more years for I have to deal with a seven year old, but what pointers would you give a a, a father of a, a young young little girl? I don't know, man. I kind of almost raise my daughter like a boy sometimes. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you know, you, I, I don't. I, I feel like. At that age, I don't know. I kind of, I kind of wanted her to explore, like, take risks, like you know, be brave, and even if it was something stupid, like, did it hurt? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> you know. Uh, but uh, I don't know, man. Enjoy it. I think that's the biggest thing because they're not gonna be that age again. Yeah. You know? yeah. And I miss, I miss my daughter being that little sometimes, like getting cuddles and everything, but. I gotta fight for cuddles and kisses now, you know. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Dang, yeah, I got, yeah, I got to keep that in mind because actually, it's like, I think now, like recently, she's really gotten like, but well, she come to me and yeah, she just be just like clinging on me, and I mean, I've been cool with it. I'm like, all right, you know, my baby love me, whatever, whatever. Um, but yeah, to imagine like she get to a point where she's just like, nah, go away, daddy. Wait, what? What's up? <laughs> What's up? Grabs the iPad and deuce. Right. <laughs> <laughs> nah, she, she don't like getting the phone though. So like granted, um, I mean, unfortunately, you know what I'm saying, my daughter isn't in the house. Um, uh, but when she is with me, like, yeah, she quit to be like, Daddy, let me get your phone. Watch YouTube. First of all, why you got to be like me and watch YouTube all the time? Second, <laughs> I mean, me yeah. and my girl. <laughs> That's my daughter. Since we get in the car, let me get your phone. What? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, like for real, like for real, for real. That's is exactly how it pops off. Uh, but shoot, also too, I guess speaking of and going, you know, I just went through this whole tirade or whatever. Um, now, just like Stess, you know, your daughter is of mixed descent. Um, yeah. How has that been? Granted, thankfully, you know, both are, and all our daughters are pretty young enough not to be too, too affected by it. But how has that affected you just on, depending on what you may have to tell her moving forward? You, you talking about, like, <sighs> Like like racial injustices and or just having the, just the idea of you know people may look at it and be like yeah uh, I mean me and her mother you know we you know her mother's a little bit more better at stuff like that than I am you know I I talk to her and you know I'll just let her know that you know it's like it's not so many words just it's fucked up like you're going to have to be very careful and, you know, and it's sad that I have to have that conversation with a seven year old girl, you know, and it's, uh, I don't know, man. I, I, I feel like sometimes like being a white male, like I can only tell my daughter so much because I've never experienced that. Right. But I think that's why her mother is, is better at, ex at, explaining something like that you know I just I know I don't have the words for it but I know I have the feelings for it that like you know what if she dates a black man 
and something happened to him with her and you know right right i i i I feel that and i think also being a dj and being in the hip-hop community that you know i i've respected everything because it's not my culture you know i was you know welcome then and but you know i have to i have to know my place as a white man basically in all of it but i do i do i do feel it and i do you know i'm just i'm bad with words sometimes so but no I, <laughs> no would you come across dog you come across great you know what i mean and, and that's uh and respectable you know what i mean understanding that you don't understand everything yeah so, you know i mean rather as fathers or just men period you know what i mean like we don't have an understanding of things that yeah there's gonna be things that my daughter i mean even though both her parents are black there's still things i'm not gonna understand what she go through as a woman you know what i'm saying and it has to be stuff that i may have to defer to you know her mom or her stepmom and or whoever else is in her life and let them explain that because i just won't know yeah yeah Nah, bro, no, I'm with you on that, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's just, I know, I think it's important, you know what I mean, that people understand, you know, just the different aspects of the dynamics that people got to go through. You know what I'm saying? It's just not simply, just not black and white. I mean, to say it, you know. No, I mean, but it's, it's gotten to the point now, too, where it's like, if you're white, you know, shut the fuck up and listen. Right. <laughs> right. What 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 can we do to help you? Shut the fuck up and listen. Listen to what's going on and and do your part. Like that's 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 that's, that's what you have to do right now. Just have a heart. Just be like, you know what? <laughs> this doesn't seem right or this isn't right. As I don't care if you black, white, whatever. If it's not right, I'm gonna make sure that it is right. Simple as that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But luckily, I don't have that problem. The one problem I did have, he's eradicated himself. So <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's nice when racists call themselves out, huh? <laughs> I know. To yourself, great. But other than that, all my white friends are great. They dope. So I ain't, I ain't got to worry about nothing. Um, but like I said, I read in your bio. You said you got into DJing at fifteen. What was what was the genesis like? What made you say, you know what, I want to scratch up records and mess up my dad's collection <laughs> oh man uh i don't know i never got into djing for like dance stuff you know just i, I can't i can't rock like eight of the l does you know what i mean <laughs> like <laughs> that was never that was never my intention <laughs> I, oh he's you know, old man i <laughs> uh i don't know it just it was, it was, it was a, a creative outlet you know so uh, kind of rolled with it. I mean, I already listened to hip hop growing up. I mean, but I was more so balanced around all types of genre music, like, you know, so uh, I don't know, mainly like Mixmaster Mike and and the whole turntablist community has made me want, really want to get into it. And then from there, you know, I went down the, the rabbit hole of, of hip hop DJs and, you know, and really knowing where it established and came from and you know right so and what was yeah. well, i mean so was being a turntable is more appealing than necessarily like being like a road dj or a party dj was it i know you know it's different you got people that's like a technical spot like you know the cubert and all those people that know how to do the crazy scratches and you got some people just like yo i know i rock a party and play the hits for people so was it like the it was kind of like that you know I, I, I think it became I think it became creative kind of like with the down the tube that that, that you'll probably play uh, you know taking like some of my favorite samples for movies and and you know I think it became a creative I like like that and then about the age of I don't know 21 I think I took it more publicly and that's when I started being the road DJ and everything else and rock and parties. Like I basically got to like learn all that shit on the fly almost <laughs> because I wasn't doing that stuff in the bedroom, you know? 
Hey, you. Okay. <laughs> uh, you said you weren't doing that in the bedroom. I'm like, all right. I get it. <laughs> we all do it better in public. I don't know. <laughs> right. <laughs> Slow, let people know how to do it in the bedroom. See what's what going on. <laughs> Yo, I'm wilding. Uh, <laughs> man, also, too, I got to, uh, speaking of uh, the joint, um, what is it? I want to say down the rabbit hole, down the tube, pause. Uh, <laughs> yo, I got to give you props, yo. Like like I said, I, I, I texted you earlier, like Fight Club is like my favorite movie ever. So I was like vibing to it. I'm like, all right, I'm trying to sneak one of these mixes in here. He don't, he don't know I'm looking at it. Or, uh, you know, I, I found it. But when I saw that, when I heard that joint, and like literally, <laughs> uh, me and my cousin, uh, our second mixtape that we dropped, like those same clips we put in the mixtape. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. So that's what like really like, like, yeah. got my attention, like, Yo, <laughs> hey. we, we use those same clips uh, in our uh, mixtape. Um, it was, it was all right. It was all right, mixtape. We, we was, <laughs> it was just all right. <laughs> lyrically, it was dope, I think. But the production, I mean, we were working on a computer mic, bro. It was, it was ghetto production, bro. It hey was, man, yo, everyone's got to start somewhere, man. I think, I think my first set of turntables were a set of. Uh, we're a set of Gemini, belt driven. Oh wow! Wow. Belt driven. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like going around the. Bro, you breathe wrong on it. The needle was jumping. Yeah. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> wow. So everybody's got to start somewhere, man. For real. Dang. All right. So. <laughs> We're going to go ahead. I'm going to get into it since we're talking about it. Then we're going to come back and talk about your new endeavors and what you're into now. Um, how you still getting your creative juices flowing yet again. So we got um, DJ Body Slinger with Down the Two. And then we got Big Low with Bloodshot Red featuring Junkie Goods with Scratches by my man, DJ Body Slinger. Not Body Slinger, because Body Slinger is racist. It's Body Slinger. <laughs> What you guys know. <laughs> <laughs> this is the evening myself hour. You got time, baby. All right, boom, boom, boom. We are back. This is boy Nick my September, which you just heard was down to two and bloodshot red with my man Big Low. Again, I told y'all Fight Club is my favorite movie of all time. <laughs> the first rule of Project Mayhem. Jesus not talking about Project Mayhem. Um <laughs> Uh, so, like we mentioned, you know what I'm saying, you got to DJing uh, due to just wanting to get your creative, you want to be in the creative um, and get those, get that out. Now, uh, you transformed from DJ Body Slinger to 850 Self Lord and to toy uh, photography. Um, how did, how in the hell... Did that pop off? I'm trying to figure out what was the transition and how you got into it. Uh, I don't know, man. Like I've always been, a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a huge, huge, huge nerd. Like, dude, I'm like one of the biggest nerds in hip hop. Like at least for the Gulf Coast. Like I can guarantee this. Uh, I've always collected action figures, and um. Back back in the early days with with Low, I would uh and everybody already knows me for being kind of a nerd dude. Um, back in the day when, when me and Low used to do big shows, I would um set up like an, an extravagant thing with like action figures holding tickets or, you know, kind of just how it started off with trying to sell tickets for bigger shows, and uh, I don't know. I just kind of went from there three or four years down the line, you know, I'm still doing it with, with tickets and everything. And I don't know. I just, <laughs> just one day I was, I was, I was, I was looking at something and I saw something on the internet. I was like, Oh, this is really cool. And, um, and so it was a guy named Mitchell Wu, Mitchell Wu photography. 
and uh, I wanted to start looking at stuff and notice that there was an actual community of people who do this. And, uh, you know, I like action figures. I like telling a narrative. So, you know, boom, it's pretty much how it happened. All right. How do you, how, like, how do you get connected to that community? Like, is it like through Reddit or just Twitter or Instagram? Nah. I mean, it's, it's pretty much over all social media. I mean, um, I have a, I have a bigger following on Instagram than I do on Facebook. Um, but, uh, Twitter, I mean, Twitter is, I'm on Twitter. I'm on, I'm on all social media, but I think majority of everything's on my Instagram. Okay. That's where I have a major community at. All right. And also too, um, what now I get, I can low key kind of ask this question because yeah, yeah, yeah. my fiance is a photographer, and I've been trying to get. Yeah, no, so, yeah, I saw that. So, uh, so, so, what kind of camera do you use? Like, is it <laughs> a particular camera or? I use a uh, lenses. Yeah. Like, what kind of lenses do you use? Like, <laughs> okay, you got the Canon. Okay, the Canon what? Canon seven D with a fifty mil. So I don't even know. Feet got a cannon. I know that. The cannon gang. <laughs> hey, we out here what? Seize what? <laughs> yeah, you, for it. you said seize? Blood? Nah, no, I was I was talking about cannon the camera. <laughs> yeah, man, it's, it's been crazy. I love this camera, man. You know what's been awesome about it's actually uh, pronounced eight five oh Sith Lord. Everyone says 850, <laughs> but it's, um, <laughs> I've been, I've been, I've had a lot of support for this, uh, Stess, speaking of Stess, Stess like bugged, not, he didn't bug me, but he was in my ear for at least six months. He's like, man, I'm telling you what, like, get an Instagram, set up a, a likes page. He's like, man, I'm telling you, this is, this is something. I was like, man, ain't nobody wants to see this corny ass shit, you know. <laughs> and, then, and then one day I just did it, and then here we are. <laughs> you know? And actually, I'm gonna go ahead and get the people. Cause I forget on the Zoom, I actually got the uh, the ability to share the screen. So give y'all a little those in YouTube land. Give y'all a little. Uh, Showcase what my man's got. Y'all can see those the sound waves as well. Uh but yeah, there we go. What's this? We got it was just me against the world and the world had it coming. Fallout. How <laughs> <laughs> about to ask like who is this? Because I, I have no idea. Oh, it's a it's a game called Fallout. It's about like a post apocalyptic uh world. It's really I'm like on my second or third playthrough right now. See, I told you I'm a nerd, dude. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, teach me, cause I, yeah, I'm just like, mm, all right, it looks like Star Wars. I don't know what's going on, but I like the depth. I like how you can see the person in the background, but you can see, you know, it's not necessarily in focus. The lighting is dope. Um, like I said, I'm talking, I'm talking my shit, cause I just been doing a lot of photography with Feely. <laughs> you know, it's like, hey. Yeah. That's actually, 2400. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually all natural lighting right there. Oh, word? That was, yeah, that's outside when my daughter was at the playground. Nice. No, that's yeah, dope. I got, I got a little bag I take with me when she goes to the playground. <laughs> I got to get like you, man. I got to uh, – actually, taking Stess's advice, I took Mackenzie out to play soccer, and she's a natural. Uh, she's gonna be better. She better than me at three <laughs> than I was when I was <laughs> playing in, in high school. <laughs> we're, uh, yeah, we're gonna get this money. So my baby went to the World Cup. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> she's gonna be that full stop. Y'all ain't ready. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. So before we get up out of here, though, man, how can people um, get in contact with you? Rather, if it's for the DJ, and but probably more importantly, get in contact. <laughs> Regarding the uh, the tour photography, uh, Weston Wilkerson on Facebook. That's my personal account. A lot of shit posting. So, eight five zero Sith Lord on 
all social media platforms, even Imager, Imager. which is still around. <laughs> hey, <laughs> 2015, I think. Like, <laughs> you get the gist from? Like, hold up. Before they had like already in your phone? Like, <laughs> Over here, and put this movable GIF in, in uh, this comment. My, my tweet, my tweet, tweet. I'm tripping. This late. Oh, uh, anyway, bro, I appreciate you you falling through. Um, and Thank I, you. I, I admire the art. Um, like I said, just um, being that I'm a uh, the husband soon enough of a photographer, and um, just like I mean, just like an image. It ain't like people being creative. And yeah. you do your thing or whatever. I know you had. Also, just want to mention you had uh, was Hasbro uh, retweet. Yeah, yeah. I've had uh, I've had Hasbro, Nika, SH Figure Arts, uh, Disney. I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's big, bro. That is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's it's nice, but when, you know when. When that paycheck starts rolling, in, then it's real. You know what I mean? I'm like, say, get that money, though. <laughs> <laughs> hey, pay this man. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> man got seven, yo. He got to get prepared for. We got to think about prom 11, 15 years from now. <laughs> we got college, man. College. It's money up. <laughs> for real. I'm going to be straight with college. I told y'all. I told you, oh. Uh, McKenzie gonna be that soccer player. She's gonna get a scholarship in North Carolina. She's gonna be all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe she just stay home, go to Florida State. They got a they got a real good soccer team. So There you so, go. What they I think Florida State was they won the championship last year. Or the year before last. Yeah, I couldn't tell you, man. The women's the women's soccer team, the women or the women's everything over Florida State. <laughs> like way better than the men, despite yeah. the fact knows the football team and the basketball, team, the baseball team. But that's been women's sports over Florida State have been like kicking ass for the past three years. <laughs> yeah, let like my baby stay at home. <laughs> play. Anyway, yo, I appreciate you, bro. Um, again, I be announcing uh, guests because every time I announce my guests for next week, you know, <laughs> not coming through. But I'm pretty sure this is a surefire guest, so I'm going to say it. My man Ashton Martin, also representing the 850, uh, will be a guest on the show next week. So, representing so um, yeah, our Dicaria, if he's not, I'm calling you guys out because you promised. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, man, that's all we got. Again, um, yeah, y'all just continue to do what y'all do. Uh, YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button if you are listening through the podcast. Just make sure um, follow my man's uh, West. <laughs> oh, you your body slinging so bad. Go follow my man West and everything he do. Now, so you know, what I'm saying follow me at all my social media, and that's that. So, uh, without further ado, this is the Nick Myself Hour. You got time, baby, and fuck you, Christopher. Yeah, Wait. fuck you. <laughs> Thanks for having me, brother. Yo, it's no problem. Thank you for...